In this fast moving market, when it comes to game systems and handhelds, there is always something new to get. And that's absolutely nuts if you're looking at AliExpress. There are so many different devices being released every single month now. And I must say that I do have a lot of struggles keeping up because I do have all kinds of products I want to check out here. This is the Earth 35S model, comes with a 640x4080 resolution of a display. It looks kind of familiar in my opinion. So this is a little bit looking at the Pow Kitty. Well, they are actually looking all the same sometimes, but and the question remains what kind of overall quality. That is mostly where we're going to look at this video. I just want to do the quick unboxing with you and just check it out. So we do have different kind of colors that you can order. I totally forgot that I what kind of what kind of color I've ordered. So it is more like the classic look here. We're going to translucent, yellow and the light blue. This 64 gigabyte model, we do have different kind of versions out there. Ah, and I got myself the blue version. Ooh, that's kind of weird blue version, by the way. So this game system, the R35S, comes with a 3500 milliamp battery. And we're going to have the configuration of four back buttons. So the overall, let's say, configuration is something that we have seen before. What I find quite interesting already, we're going to get two similar Nintendo Switch joysticks with a click. Select start with micro switch and the event button or a function key. And what I don't really like already is that we're going to have four buttons here at the corner. The same for the D-pad. And the way I don't like this because you need to cramp up your hands very strangely. Maybe due of my size of my hands with smaller hands is going to be more comfortable. <laughs> At the left side, we're finding the on and off switch, reset, and here we're having the second SD card. Oh, <laughs> And this is not a real brand whatsoever. It's just basically a non-generic, and these things are pretty damn bad. I have seen them with game sticks, and they get corrupted all the freaking time. But how is it with the software? So first of all, this is just the full version. In other words, there's all kinds of stuff that you can mess around with. But some cheap devices we had that are going to be locking it all down and there's nothing you can do about it. So here we have the emulator settings, scraper, advanced settings. If you want to mess around with it, if you have problems, you can always get into this and try to fix things yourself. Because take consideration, not everything will be perfect. In combination with even some options like brightness control can be switched here, but we're going to put it on 100%. So when it is with the compatibility of the different systems, so this device is absolutely great. In combination with the piece of software we're going to see here, we're having all kinds of very cool devices. But when we're going to have the most struggles, it's going to be PlayStation Portable. And you know, N64, you know the same stuff that we have seen many times before. Dreamcast is a system that will have a hit or miss, but particularly I want to focus on all kinds of stuff. Getting into the games, it seems to be that we don't have every single screenshot ready. But out of the box, there's still a lot of cool things you can do. Unfortunately, the naming is one freaking nightmare. It just having numbers and in short, freaking name. The screenshots make it right, but in the end, this is what we're going to have outside of the box. So it is a plug and play situation here. Then we're going to get two Type-C connections. One will be for the charging, another one for the OTG port. And if you want to implement an extra controller and the headphone jack out. And last but not least, the first SD card basically at the right side. And this is for the OS. Now it comes pre-installed with an OS, but in the future, maybe we can get some different one. But I recommend you, this is the only 32 gigabyte. And make backup of these cards and replace them with real brands. So you don't have any issues with getting corrupted cards. And this is a big issue with these things nowadays. Volume control, and that is something I find pretty damn cool, that we're having a physical volume control, but that is not with every single handheld nowadays. And then of course we're having the four back buttons. And I must say that they are basically in the same kind of position. So when you're holding the device itself, uh, they don't feel very comfortable actually to press. And also when it comes to the overall quality, you need to press it very hard. So with some of the, let's say, Pau Kitty devices where you can accidentally like press it, this is something you will not have with this particular product, but you need to press it very hard. And the positioning of them, if you're going to be playing, they are not comfortable at all. So yeah, I always need to complain about something, right? <laughs>
but out of the box it comes with a piece of plastic in front of it so let's remove that first Ooh, and it is really glossy and I'm thinking to the certain angle you can see we're having a bezel but that one is not very big uh, I like that but what are we going to have in the actual box itself so dust absorber okay then we're going to get some wipes we're going to have also the type c cable a very nice long one the toilet paper manual that doesn't really explain anything at all let's see if we can unfold it can we freaking even fold it yep we can <laughs> this is actually what we're going to have for information the rgb 20 as instruction also called a din so i'm guessing this is basically for two different devices okay that's kind of pointless and what's kind of cool and i wish they implemented it from the factory we do have an extra front glass so that's kind of cool so in other words like if you want to have a screen protector you're going to get a very thick one so it's very nice i'm going to implement it because i'm always messing these things up but let's boot it up and let's what are we going to see when it comes to the os okay booting up it will show the device that we're actually holding in my hand okay that's a quite interesting choice then we need to wait and oh, i think we need to wait a couple of seconds hello the led says that it's powered on but there is actually nothing happening over there oh yeah it's always the first question did they mess it up or is actually nothing working oh there we go so it's running on arc os 2.0 Man, this thing takes freaking forever to boot up. After a minute or so, it will boot and start off with emulation station. So what you can see with the loading screen, that we do have a lot of different kind of emulators. And I think that is very cool because it gives you a deep dive into the old school era of the Atari, but also the DOS and all the other craziness. Oh! But between all of the function keys and joystick and d-pad, here we're going to find one single speaker. It's an interesting choice in my opinion. I'll give you, let's say, a look into how it sounds. But when you're looking at the quality, man, this sounds really nice. It's kind of interesting that they went for a mono speaker at the front, at this front facing, so the overall quality you're going to have and experience is so much different than having one at the bottom. But how is it with the overall quality of the display? This thing looks absolutely amazing. It's a great IPS panel that they slapped into the device itself. I did notice with mine, I do have a little bit of a quality issue. You can see the bezel at the front is sticking out, so that is a little bit of an annoying thing. But let's talk some specs, so let's get into the nerdy mode. So when it comes to the CPU, it's a rock chip, the 3326. That's a quad-core ARM 64-bit Cortex-A35 CPU that runs on 1.5 GHz, only 1 GB of RAM, that is actually DDR3L, 3.5 inches of a display, it is an IPS full viewing angle, and that's absolutely true, with a resolution of 640 by 480. Nevertheless, they have some options for Wi-Fi capabilities, 2.4 and 5 GHz. And when it comes to the games, there is so much to play. 3200 milliamp will give you around 6 hours of game time. But let's take a close look also at the D-pad itself. But how does it play? So first of all, when you're looking at the way how it feels, it does have a very nice travel. Very short in my opinion. But when you just press it, man, it has a lot of resistance. All right, so let's see where we can have an, a great performance when it comes to finding games. Where well, I don't love the feel of this D-pad when it comes to how, let's say, it has with a lot of resistance. The response of this thing is absolutely nuts. But let's start off with some PlayStation 1 emulation. These devices are absolutely great. And in combination with this amazing display and the resolution, the PlayStation game come absolutely to life. But when it comes to compatibility, here we're going to have, in my opinion, the first problem. I cannot really say that I am enjoying this game. Because take consideration, you're going to need the back buttons a lot. And I don't find it really comfortable to play with these weird back buttons. You need to press them quite hard. And the positioning is also not great. So, oh man, my hands, oh! 
Next up, let's take a close look at PlayStation Portable. So pressing both joystick will give you the option to get into, kind of cool shoe, that's new, getting into the settings. And here we can change out all kinds of things. Already has been set to framescaping number one because these devices are not great in my opinion for PlayStation Portable emulation. Not only the, the resolution and in my opinion, the screen size is different of an original PSP. This is just not the way how you want to play in my opinion. We're going to be entering with the FPS counter on so you can show you what's going on here. And Tekken 5 is one of those games that are not super demanding. You can see having a lot of frame drops throughout the game. But actually when you're going to play some more diff less difficult emulation games like two-dimensional stuff, there we go to have great performance. But where, the, where this particular device is perfect for is old school gaming. In combination with this beautiful display, in my opinion this is an absolute great experience. The combined combined playing with the analog stick and the button at the right bottom corner. The right joystick is not configured whatsoever. I did see sometimes it's been configured to the, let's say the front facing buttons, but that's not the case over here. So great man. So if you want to enjoy some 8-bit, 16-bit stuff or some PC engine, man, this is going to be absolutely a blast. If you want to get into RetroArch for making a quick look, quick save or do an adjustment, pressing both joystick will grant you the option to get there. So we can make a quick low, quick save and mess around with it if you want to. I think it's pretty damn cool that we still have the option. So that makes this handheld very, let's say, overall, let's say, friendly when it comes to the experience itself. But let's move on with a different system, but system and this is going to be the Super NES. Do have the resistance, I need to press the D-pad quite hard to get around here in the playing field, but not to the point that it's going to be quite annoying. But I prefer to play with the joystick at this point. Oh yeah, let's crack on the volume. So with Game Boy, we're not going to get any battles whatsoever. But in my opinion, it doesn't really look that bad. Let's start with Bug Bumble on the N64, a game that has been let's say, touch benching on a lot of different devices and oh boy, yeah, the glitching is not a good start. But it got one of the best intros ever. Oh, that audio speaker. When it goes loud, but it sounds absolutely crap. And you're pressing it to the 90% on. Okay, this is a game that we're going to need every single freaking joystick. And navigation is going to be otherwise impossible. The consideration that would also with N64, if you just want to play this, this is not the right handheld for it. But I do have okay the overall experience, besides having a lot of grid glitching going on. It's not great in my opinion. So let's reset it and let's choose a different game. But if you're looking at a device that needs to play all kinds of Game Boy games or NES, Super NES, you name it, I think this is absolutely one of those devices that you can consider. But, but another thing you need to consider is that where we have amazing overall performance and emulation nowadays with these cheaper devices, the overall controls, in my opinion, I have seen way better configurations. Like the other devices, pressing both of the joysticks will grab you, give you the option to make a quick save and just load.
In combination with the audio on 50-60%, it sounds quite nice. And if you just want to experience some old school nostalgia games, oh yeah, this is absolutely a lot of fun. But even if this thing is a single speaker, we have all the sound effects and everything sounds amazing. But coming back to the D-pad, I've noticed that I need to press it really hard at this point. Another game system I wanted to check out is the Nintendo DS. And I'm just going to be honest, I really hate emulating this. And the reason why, because normally the experience of the Nintendo DS are having two displays. So we can switch very easily by pressing one of the back buttons or we're getting the full screen over here. So it is actually a way to play, but one of the shenanigans you're going to have is having no touch screen. And that is a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. But doesn't spoil the full fun. So let's get into some gameplay. And I'll show you what, you what you're going to be not missing out, in my opinion. But, so, let's do a quick gameplay. And I will show you what I particularly mean with not a great experience. So, yeah, you can just play the game without any problems. But you always, always need to mess around with the screen. And if you just want to play, for example, you want to look at the map. You can very quickly switch. And that part I don't really like. But when it comes to the overall Nintendo DS performance, it does seem to be running just fine. So another thing I wanted to check out is Sega Dreamcast, but here we're going to push it to the limit in my opinion. I also noticed a lot of difference with the audio freaking level. But you can hear that it stutters. I kind of really enjoy the game like this. So what I was quite surprised with this device is that it is very easy to open up. Normally they're having a combination of screws and clicking mechanism in the inside, but that is not the case. So if you need to do some maintenance, for example, if you want to replace the battery, you can do this fairly easy. So let's put it upside down so all of the screws will fall out. So here we're going to have a quick overview of how it actually works. The battery oh, does have a little bit of a little bit of a heat over here, but it comes with the plug, so it's great. So you don't need to do a resoldering if you want to do some maintenance of replacing the battery itself. It doesn't say any brand or whatsoever. This is the most of the time the case with these devices, but it comes in a black packaging where it normally it's going to be some goldish cooling looking or whatever. But it's, it's kind of strange that they went for the situation that we're having a speaker in the middle. That is something you don't see very often. At the back, we're going to find the four buttons, the four micro switches that will be connected over here. So there's actually nothing between it. It's just purely the plastic on the micro switches. And then there is no cooling on the chip itself. It seems to be that it's not really necessary. It's not hard at all. But here we're going to get ourselves the rock chip and the modules when it comes to the RAM. And here we see that we're having the LCD at the other side, which you can interchangeable. So if you need to do some maintenance or replace a speaker or an LCD display, that is actually possible. And uh, if I'm saying it correctly, it seems to me that this thing even has a rumble motor in the inside, if I'm saying it correctly, actually. But that is what we're going to have when it comes to the device itself in the inside. So if you want to do some, uh, let's say, repairing or you need to, let's say, swap the battery, this thing is very easy to repair. If you're looking at the positive and the negative parts of the device, so first of all, I think the negative thing is, I just not going to start over it. I don't like the form factor of this thing, me personally. I find it not really comfortable, and when it a gazillion poor options out there with different devices, uh, I would pick something else. Where I do love the D-pad, the D-pad is absolutely amazing on this thing, but the configuration of the buttons is not my favorite. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and let me know in the comments what do you think of this device. And it would be great to see you in the next video.